TV. Yeah, this crap network we work for. What the hell's going on in this place? Somebody's getting fired after the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Guilty Guys, episode 40 for September 12, 2012. You're watching Game Breaker. I'm Gary Gannon. ArenaNet wants you to join a cult. Patch notes are like a real MMO. Official forums have uh, launched, and uh, that's the best I can do for an intro. So, without further ado, it's Scott Hawks, it's Elizabeth Clare, it's Richie Procopio, and we're out. Bye. <laughs> Good night, everybody. What's up, everybody? What's going on? All right, no, seriously. Let's do a show. Shenanigans pre show just makes you crazy. Pre show can make you crazy on the live show. You guys have no idea why that intro was so bizarre. Well, you should show up for the live show because it was, it's been fun. It's been fun. I think we have viewer questions too. I don't know. Maybe. Unless they suck. If they suck, we won't do them. I haven't read them yet. I don't usually pay attention to this show. I usually let you guys do it. So, what's everybody laughing about? This is going to be the painfully honest show it is, huh? It is. I just showed because there's coffee. We have subject matter for it. They just promised me coffee. I, they tell me there's, there's caffeine at this show, and I just I show no up coffee. and do my thing. That's all That's all I have. I actually finished two cups right before the show. <laughs> I'm coffee-less. I need to have water. Richie, are you coffee-less? So sad. I am coffee-less. I, I, have, I have a Diet Coke. It's got okay. caffeine. Elizabeth, are you drinking water? No water. Water. No, don't, that's too healthy. Caffeine. Sorry. Can't be helped. All right. Before we get uh, into the show, I guess we're already in the show. Um, kind of, whoop, there we go. Look at everything's going wrong. Black screens. Somebody's getting fired. Fired <laughs> somebody after this show. Doing it live. Like um, a watch. I, I've been working on, I, I hope you guys don't mind. I've been, I've, I've been working on a, a project the past week um it's a little art project i've been i've been kind of tooling around with um you know mike does music i figured i'd do something so it doesn't really have anything to do with guild wars 2 but i i, I felt like this is like you know it's the biggest show we have in the network it's the most popular one so i, I kind of felt the need to play it so i figured i'd play it for you guys tell me what you guys think so do you guys mind does anybody mind if i yeah sure go for no, it you guys good cool. all right cool For too long, a shadow has gripped the land. <laughs> and we have stood by, paralyzed by fear and doubt.
I'm going Illuminati. What are you guys going? What are you guys rolling? <laughs> dragon, dragon all the way. Dragon. Damn you, dragon. It's all about the Illuminati. <laughs> all right, no, seriously, viewers. Uh, that is the official uh, launch trailer for Guild Wars 2. Um, your faces were hilarious while watching that, especially yours, Scott, when you were hiding your eyes. Um... Arena Net, you know I love you. I sincerely love you. This has to be the worst thing about Guild Wars 2. Am I wrong? I don't know. Um, it, it, um, hmm. No, it may it may have been good on paper. I, I have to I have to Who's tell you. <laughs> I have to tell you the first time I launched I loaded this up, I put it full screen. And I started watching it, and I literally thought it was an ad before the trailer. And I sat there, like, thinking in my head. I, my mind started to wander. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I didn't think on the Arena Net official channel they had ads. And I'm like, man, this ad is long. And then all of a sudden, the, the woman comes out of the water, and it turns into a Nord. I'm, I look at the screen like, what? And I had to rewind and watch it. I thought it was an ad. Uh, it had nothing to do with Gilworth 2. Very strange. It was very, it's, very weird. It's, it's very, very, very weird. And I mean, I like really weird yeah. crap, like conceptually. Like I'm a huge David Lynch fan. So it's not about being weird. It takes it. it it's it, it's, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's not weird. It's Sorry, bad. It, it just it's it's, it's, it's a it's bad. bad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's 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 god awful. They should burn it and you know, just just never. <laughs> and, it it you really is. I'm sorry. I love Arena Net. I think Guild Wars Two is the best of to come on the market. They probably didn't make this in house. They probably hired another production company. And you know what? Yeah. They dropped the ball. This sucks. It sucks. I heard the director was the same guy that did V for Vendetta. Yes. Yeah, well, screw that guy. Yeah. And, oh wait, and, is, <laughs> wait. No, are you serious? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Wait, is it? Is yeah. it? Is it? Is it? Um, is it? Um, is it? Uh, what's his name? The guy who does all the video game podcasting stuff and uh, who he works for yeah, IGN. What's his name? Um, you got a tweet oh, Hang on. Uh, what's his it's name? Charum. Is it is it not, is it the the guy who worked? At, oh man, what is he? He's, what's James his name? Teague is the guy who directed oh, it. Oh no, James that's McTeague. not what I'm thinking of. That's not what I'm thinking of. It's bad. It's it's really bad. You know, and it's oh, and I, it's overwhelmingly the 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 social uh, sediment across the entire internet, Twitter, our comments, Facebook, everywhere. It's bad. It's just bad. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like it's. Uh, is the first thing I've actually been disappointed with and out of the entire ReNet group. It's just, it, it's, I don't know. Liz, Liz, you're being really quiet. What are your thoughts? I'll, I'll let you go first. I feel like if they had called it a commercial and it had aired like during the Super Bowl or something more timely but similar, the reaction would have been more positive because people wouldn't have been expecting a trailer. Scott vehemently disagrees. See, I, th I just think it's cheesy. Like, I just think it's totally it's cheesy. I. It's. It's just not very good. I there I don't understand some of the directions their in world marketing has taken and this is one of them that I don't necessarily conceptually agree with. And you're not the only one. I mean we're not we're not like I, I mean it's not we are not the only people like uh you know out there kind of pointing this out. God, they're gonna hate this episode. But yeah, they're going we gotta, gotta call it like it is. I mean everything else is brilliant. It's just, it, it was a bad direction. Yeah. How, I'm going to totally speculate here and I'm probably, yeah, I'm just going to go on. Does anybody think that this is probably, we possibly didn't see this launch trailer on launch because there was so much internal discussion about this trailer of possibly not being very good. I'm not sure of that. I think they just didn't want to push this out and do a, a full media push when they were telling people they couldn't buy the game. Yeah, the that's really what I think. Cause the same moment, basically that this came out, the game opened up for digital purchases. Again. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just saw that bit where the hot gamer chick who's, She's really a hot gamer chick. Wow. Um, jumps over there. I was I was thinking it's Watchmen and it's Rorschach and say, they'll look up at me and say, save <laughs> us. And I'll say, no. And um, that's not really Guild Wars 2. No, I, I can see and, what and, they're and doing, it's funny, trying uh, to do. Uh, go ahead. So I, I can see what they're trying to do. It just didn't really work. And the messaging is really weird. Like, I mean, you could have you could have written this on paper. It could have sounded really cool, right? We're gonna do live action, real like you know actors, and they're gonna trans, you know, they're gonna morph into their in-game characters, and it's gonna be like super cool and like you know it's just more stripping. of that. I, 
I, yeah, I, I, I could see I could see writing that up and being a really good creative writer and writing up the premise for this and the pitch and kind of giving it and getting Arena Net really excited by this and being like, wow, that's a mm-hmm. kick-ass idea of real-life players. It morphs into the in-game. You're going to see your characters are going to kind of look like them. Like, that's awesome. Hey, remember just, Modern, Modern Warfare 3? Wasn't that a great trailer when you had, you know, Jonah Hill and walking around? and It was exciting. The thing is, that was really well messaged because it says, look, Everybody loves it, even famous people, but even noobs can get into it, so don't worry about that initial, I'm not going to enjoy it because I'm not an expert thing. You'll get to learn. There's a good learning curve. They had a story through it, a message. It was fun, and it made absolute sense with the game. This doesn't. No, I like, know. And it's like, as we were even playing it in chat, I think some people in chat may have not seen it, and people were like, what is this? What is this? Like, they could not tell that this was... Guild Wars 2. And I made the joke of, you know, referencing if you guys didn't get the joke at the beginning about the Illuminati and the dragons, those are characters from the secret world, because everybody who sees it and has seen the secret world is, this makes more sense for the secret world. Like, it kind of fits more in that game than it does Guild Wars 2. It just doesn't, it just doesn't, it's, I don't know. Well, they, I don't know what they were thinking they here. I, I would have scrapped this after I saw it and just threw away the money and said, you know what? This isn't working. Somebody go make an in-game trailer and let's, let's get it out. Well, I, I, because I, I, I wrote an article that was a little blunt, shall we say, earlier in the week. <laughs> Yeah. Little blunt. And um I was some people said to me, It's because people people aren't smart enough to realise what they're doing. No. <laughs> no, I, I'm able to read uh, allegory and metaphor, all the rest of it. And I see exactly what the allegory is and the illusions they're trying to make. But when you're saying that that first step into your new gaming world is like walking across hot coals, that might not be the best <laughs> message you're trying to get across. <laughs> Uh, hey, we're trying to appeal to a broader market, so we're going to do it in a back alley where, where only a certain niche sort of, as you said, sort of like a niche section, it turns up to play party, and it's like walking over hot coals to get into the game. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the really lovely image of, and it's the it's the, the reference to air to gulping, like underwater, which is what the... The, the lovely lady swimming underwater through the room is like bringing the world into your room, that crossover, that transition from the real world into interior. See, it's not that hard to figure out. Um, but you only know that if you're a hardcore fan. So it's not, so people say it's not, it's not really appealing to the hardcore fan, it's appealing to people who don't know MMOs. You only know that if you're a hardcore fan. And here she comes out of the water to say, because I'm worth it, which is wonderful. Dude, um, she's wearing she's um, wearing a she's wearing a hot bathing suit though. She's pretty hot. Yeah, I don't know. You know well, the dress, it's, you know, it's it's um, it, it's not that it's something new and different. It's not new and different. This isn't like wow, you, you're not you're confused because it's never been done before. There's a lot of advertise things that have been done in advertising plenty in here before, in game advertising in here. It's simply that to me the the messaging is very confused. And it doesn't sell the game as well as the game itself does. I said to Elizabeth, I said, if if they'd put, if they'd have got anybody to do five minutes of fraps, right, <laughs> and then at the end just put up our MMO kicks your MMO's ass, it would have been better. <laughs> That's harsh. Fraps for five minutes would have been better than the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars that uh, they but spent the on this. The game is so good and spectacular and dramatic, and the music and the score is so good. And instead, they have, we get they, they could have taken their light. They they could have taken and, their concept art, which is just dripping with yeah, just cool, incredible, and had a great music and some some title cards, and it would be better than this. It would be all this live action. It just it, and you know what? You know what? Sometimes. It doesn't always work out, right? Like, I've worked in production for a long time. Sometimes you have ideas and you make shows and things like that. You know what? Sometimes it just doesn't pull together. But sometimes you also got to just be like, you know what? That's got to go on the cutting room floor. I I know we just spent a million dollars on it, but you know what? This is like cancer. Like, just get rid of this. But the good news is, I mean, they, they say, you know, there's no such thing as like bad press, but the, the, I think it's true in this case because all of the articles you see on the various sites about it is claiming, it basically says, can't believe for a game that's so good, 
Right. Th- so this trailer that. is so bad. So even if players who never you know, have tried Guild Wars 2 will, will, will read this, and it's still a bad trailer, they might not like the trailer, but they'll read how good the game is and why people are disappointed in it. So it could actually be bringing in you know some players despite despite I, its quality. And I mean, uh, good, the bad press is good press. I, I feel like usually when it is controversial, I guess you could say that this is this is very controversial because everybody's talking about it, right? We just spent how many minutes on it? We're just going to keep going because we got nothing else to talk about this week. Um, <laughs> but I don't know in this case because I feel like uh, I don't know. I mean, what across it's, the internet have have any of you guys seen uh, like a spark of positivity about? Are we, are we just kind of kind of in our shallow little corner of the internet and we're kind of being really <laughs> completely hard on this? Or are the forums and 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 comments? You know, saying otherwise, or people like some people actually thinking this is really cool. I've seen people defending it. What I don't understand that I've seen are people who let this actually take away from their enjoyment of their game. The game, like there are actually people who are coming and they're like, "This makes me like Guild Wars Two less," oh, and that so I just silly. don't understand. Like that is ridiculous. That's yeah. silly. Yeah. They hired a production yeah. company. They did not make this right. They hired a production company, and the production company screwed up. That's ba- you know, they did not deliver a good quality product. That's, that's, that's really all there is to it. It's just, it's, it's not, it's not good. It's not, it's not a good concept. It just wasn't executed. Well, I would shelve this, bury it, get it off the internet. You know, I don't know, get some sanctions so people can't watch it anymore. I don't know. Something. (laughs) It's if if it was controversial in the, but it's not controversial. It's only controversial because people go, that's not very good. Right. Like we're, we're not in Azeroth. A game that's so good. Yeah, it's not that. It's right. Not that was controversial in a way that like everybody was talking, but it was like, wow, I can't believe they went there. Like, yeah. I can't believe they went after yeah. a World of Warcraft. That was in your face. It was right. right. We're going for you. This. This is people. This, just, it's bad. This is a, this it's is a just, just lift. It, You know, it, it, it's it's there, and it's just it's disappointing. That's it. The reason the reason is is that people are like we've been we've been saying this is that like, we love this game. This is our game, and we want everybody to know. I want my friend. You know. It was. I think people saying it's supposed to appeal to people who are into just watching the football on a Friday night, on a Monday night, or whatever it said. But to them, it's like this, this was you putting our game out to show everybody how great this is, and this is it. it, it it's uh, it, it's confusing rather than con, controversial. Not because the trailer itself is is controversial or confusing. It's not confusing at all. It's just confusing why it's this disconnected is. this is it's... your exemplification of your game has mm. has i i kind of think i know the answer to this but i have to ask um has anyone from arena Net spoken at all about this i mean i don't think they would i really wouldn't expect them to not that i've seen no. i, I... The actual oh, gameplay sweet. part at the yeah. end is actually pretty badass, right? I mean, you get to see Zytan again. I mean, yeah. all his glory. At that That's point, the- I uh, you know I don't know if it makes up for the rest of it, but when it gets to that point, I think we're all kind of happy. We're like, all right, that's badass. I'm I'm actually a little bummed that I got to see him in all his glory. I was kind of hoping yeah, that it's it's a little, that off. A little spoil- It's a little spoilery. Yeah, yeah. I, I was really looking. For- One of the things was going to see Zaitan walking in there and seeing him on my character looming over my character's head for the first time and that was a bit disappointing that i'm not that that's the first time that that's the first time i see like 10 was he that yeah in a trailer that you just watched that you were disappointed in and confused and then you got to get the spoiler reveal yeah. of Zaitan. If, I, if, I'm gonna go, if i'm gonna go through a trial to get to Zaitan, i want it to be a bunch of mobs not the advert before it Scott is I'm, mad. He's he's very harsh. I'm not mad. I'm just. <laughs> no, I think I think I think, I think like I said. I mean, we posted I know, it up. It was, it was one. And, we are. We all are. But I mean, we posted it up on Game Breaker, and it was one of the most commented uh, things that we've done all week. And it just it was a lot of negativity. I mean, it's like I said. It's it's. I think I think you know why we're all kind of angry at it as well, and why we're talking about it is because we all love the game so much. Yeah. And we actually sure. are like, wow, this does not really do the game justice because mm-hmm. i honestly i'm I've, I've the past like three nights i've been playing like non-stop and i'm i'm so hooked on the game like there's just so much good this comes along and it's just like pfft, stinker 
What do you think they should do? What do you, I, mean, I don't know. Like they, they could, they could go like, go like, oh, troll! Hey, the real launch trailer is here. Just give us anything. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they'll do that. But I think no, I, I don't think, think they'll do that either. No, I think I think there's certainly a lot of follow up um, advertising they could push with putting the game front and center, not a concept about what the game could mean to the gaming industry, but the game. Just get the game. Like put that to the forefront. No, as I said, it, the whole idea of look, it's gonna, it's breaking us out of tired, staid ways of playing MMOs and and all that sort of stuff as the concept. I guess I kind of understand it, but if you if you're trying to make show what's revolutionary, don't talk about a revolution, and then and then make uh, metaphors for it. You know, your game, your your game is good enough to just hold up and say, look at that. Come on, come and come and have some of this, because you're gonna love it. Not oh, it's been the dawn of time. They've been waiting <laughs> for you to break out of this Apple advert from 1984, and you will. Yeah. I can only imagine. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at this, and we'll move on. But I can only imagine that, like most of the creatives on the team, probably saw this and were probably weeping because they're gamers. And I can't believe that they all thought that this was cool. And that the entire internet thinks it's a stinker. I don't know. I'll leave it at that. It's got to be. It's got to be horrible. Where you? I mean, the Elizabeth doesn't want to say anything. She's like, I'm being so I'm quiet gone. about this. Well, no. I mean, Scott's got all the funny lines, so sorry. Let him roll with it. No, I'm sorry. I'm. I do feel like a bit like I'm. I'm like, it's. It's. It is very easy to pick on it. It is. And I do feel harsh. It is very easy to pick on it. And it's. It's. It's it's the problem is it's more entertaining to make fun of it than watch it. That's the problem. It and, is. And, All right. And it's, it's horrible, but I'll dial it back in. So uh, you know, we got we got a comedy show, Guild Wars two show. I'll just play this, and we can all laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> Get back up. <laughs> He's so bad. Look at him. He's so mean. So look at this guy's the best. He's got like teeth coming out all front of his face. He's sweating. <laughs> Sweep the leg. That guy. Just <laughs> totally <laughs> fail. That before. Oh, oh, this guy's hilarious. This guy. Look. <laughs> he uses foot of like to his face. He needs a hip replacement. <laughs> he really does. Everybody's all time favorite, though, of course. Of course. The one, the only. Nunchuck yes. man. Yes. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I love just, that part right there. He's got A for it. Yeah, he just totally gets an A for effort right there. All right. In uh, better marketing this week, hopefully I can do do justice. Uh, I want to tell you about Netflix. Doctor Who. Yes, yes, yes. Doctor Who, I want you to try Netflix free for 30 days. If you go over to Netflix.com slash GameBreaker TV, you can try Netflix free, free, free for 30 days. This is their streaming service. You can stream it to your iPad, your iPhone, your Xbox, your Wii, all your electronic devices, your Roku. Uh, if you like the service, it is eight bucks a month. But if you don't like it and you want to cancel it before the 30 days are up, just cancel and you will not be charged anything. Go over to Netflix.com slash T and give it a try. I know you're going to love it. Try, try, try it. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. All right. So we've got patch notes, guys. It's like a real MMO. It's like this is like crap we usually pay fifteen bucks a month for. Now let's get into the good stuff. It's craziness. It's craziness. I guess uh, they really support this game. Yeah. They're just gonna like you know throw it to the wind and say, oh well, we're done. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> all right. First up, uh, they said almost all of the broken skill challenges have been fixed. Anybody uh, run into any problems here? Anybody uh, see this issue resolved? Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple that were fixed in it. I feel like the almost is kind of a caveat so that they can't say, you know, we fixed all of them and someone finds one that invariably snuck through. So it, it does seem like the majority of the ones that were bugged have been made okay. Yeah, Anybody I'm else? Still, I'm, I'm still finding, like, some event chains are stuck. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and especially some of the disappointing ones, like the Flame Temple Tombs, you can't seem to, to run... Uh, that whole Flame Legion Battles meta mm -hmm. chain event has been stuck for quite a few days. So there, there's still some residual things like that, but they'll get to them. Almost every event in I in the Iron March marches last night was just dead bugged. It was not great. 
Really? But yeah, they I seem have, to be fixed. I, I haven't had these issues. I, I, I haven't really run across anything that seemed bugged at all yet. Um, one thing you told me was really interesting is I still notice, and I'm going to bring it up again because we tell, we tell people all the time, and Liz, you're, you're a huge proponent of telling everybody to do this, is I notice that when you finish event change, people don't hang around. Are you guys yeah. crazy? So like, annoying. I found some of the coolest things, by the way, of just following these people. Like, I, I stumbled into an area, and there were some people doing something with some eggs, and I followed them, and we did the, 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 the event, that chain there. They had a conversation, and I noticed everybody had taken off by the time they were done with their conversation, and I was, like, the only one there. And I followed mm-hmm. them, and they ran really far. Like, it wasn't, like, around the corner. It was, like, a while, and I was just following, 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 following. Finally come up onto, like, a little village hut thing, and then there's a whole more conversation. There's, like, conversation that's going on there, and I was like, this is crazy. And then all of a sudden, another event pops up in the town, and then, like, it's getting invaded, and it just, like, rolled into another event. And I was like, wow, that really sucks for those guys. Like, they just totally missed out yeah. on all this stuff they just i mean maybe they did it already and they were redoing the event i mean i'm sure there's that case and they know it's there but i feel like a lot of people don't know like even my buddy i was playing with i told him that and he was like really and i was like yeah dude just follow them like they're gonna bring you to something that you probably don't know exists it's probably one of the coolest yeah. things yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, I, I, I love that it's like not only are you getting the extra bits of story right and you get to, to see more of the world but you know from from person that really just wants to benefit their character really quickly you can get three or four you know events done in a row in a very short time period if you follow that 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 chain and you can you know you can gain a lot of experience points a lot of uh you know golden karma just by doing that so it's really it it pays both from your experience point of view but also from your character progression point of view to, to stick around and see those things yes I know the chat room is telling me uh, I bitched a few weeks ago about that Norn quest. Apparently that got nerfed, thank God. At 13, I think it's down to like 10 or 11. So of course I'm done with it by now. Scott, you had something? I was just going to say, people are still, people are still stuck in quest of mentality where like, they're standing there because they talked, well, there's a heart, so I'm going to stand next to the heart because that's where the quest hub is. And uh, all right, that's done, so I'll go to the next one. And um, and that's what's going on. And it's it's not built that way. It just the game isn't built that way. So um, if you if you're doing it that way, then you're just missing out. And it's and I've heard well, it's the game's fault. Well, the content's there. So if you want to f- experience it, go find it. Uh, I did a video this week on it about going through the level and testing the leveling curve. And it was. If you go heart to heart to heart to heart, you miss out on tons of stuff. Because those straight lines just cut across all these things that are happening around the map. They just cut through it. And and you don't... Jazz <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and if, you, if you don't explore and take your time doing it, you're going to miss out. Um, so yeah, so it, it is. It's that mentality, that quest of mentality that that is throwing people off a lot. And those hearts having prominence on the map, people still think those are quest hubs, and they're not. But I guess, I mean, I, on the flip side, you got to say, uh, we're, we, it is going to be a little bit of a learning curve because we have been mm-hmm. sort of taught over the years as MMO players to play a certain way. And when we see something sure. sticking over the top of their head, whether it's an exclamation point or a heart, the brain just goes like, oh, quest giver. I have, yeah. and I still deal. I hear. So I haven't heard as many people talking about the leveling curve being an issue. But I don't know about you guys, but I've. I also found myself at multiple times uh, throughout leveling, where I was kind of. I don't want to say there's like a fork in the road, but I was able to go off in different directions at the same level, and it completely brought me to like you know some of the areas outside of the Norn area, and I went and quested there for a while, like. I, and doing things like that, and not staying to just like my Norn snowy area twenty four seven. Made up for it. Like I, I'm, I've never been low level or something without like stuff to do or or over. Like it just it hasn't happened. But I've also gone and done a bunch of little everything. You know, w dub this that into the other areas, playing with other people. So, but it is. It's hard. I think it's hard to for a lot of MMO players maybe to break out of that mentality. It is, and um, I mentioned in an article this week that ArenaNet isn't necessarily making it easy on them because. If you look at the map, you're not going to see a lot of dynamic events being identified, whereas you're going to see the hearts being identified. So it's very easy for people to think, oh, these are being pointed out. Like I have scout NPCs who are showing me the hearts. Hearts must be the thing I do. Mm -hmm. And it's much harder to discover DEs that aren't right next to you. So it's not necessarily making it any easier for players who aren't familiar with the design of the game. 
it's, it's something we've talked about in previous weeks where we've said that the, the, the prominence of the heart on the map is, is in no way proportionate to the prominence of the heart in your leveling experience. And that's an issue because it, that's a visual identifier for, for gamers that's been going on in, in MMOs for quite a while. Plus, it's simply the, the logic of looking at your map and going, okay, where is it to go? Everything's blurry in that lovely painted aesthetic except for those very solid large hearts. So you're going to think those you're, are the You're pointing things, them out to the player, the player to go there, basically. Yeah. You're, that's the carrot yeah. on the stick. It says, hey, go, well, what's, what's, the, what's the solution? Or does there need to be, or, or what's the answer here? I think it would definitely help, like Elizabeth was saying, to actually have some sort of indication on the maps of where some of the events in the area, in the zone that you're in, are taking place right now. So you can know where to head. Because... You know, because let's say even you're, you're just you're, you want to experience everything that a zone has to offer. Let, let's say you've done all the hearts ready and you just stand in the middle of the zone. You, you, you kind of have to wander around a little aimlessly, you know, in order to, to find the, the dynamic events that are happening. But so it would be nice to have some little, sort of. But doesn't it take a little bit of away from the because, experience of, of just yeah, kind of yeah. stumbling on the events? Because that's part of the coolness is like how many times have you stumbled on an event? You're just like, oh, this is badass. Where if they were like. You know, as soon as you that's, step into a the zone, thing. they're like, this is going on, this is going on. Make sure you go over here, and here's like a GPS waypoint to go yeah. get you over there. Like, I think it, I think it would kind of kill that experience. A lot of if it is indicate, about the exploration, yes. Yeah. If you indicate where the dynamic events are on the map, you're simply making mobile quest hubs. It, yeah. That, that, it, that defeats the whole sort of, like, ideology behind should the they design just, of the Should game. they just take the hearts away? Maybe they just take the that's hearts away. Uh, so I'd certainly make it less provident, less visually, like, uh, ob well, not obvious, but less visually overbearing in relation to the rest of the stuff around it. Uh, um, I, I think originally, what, I don't know if I was told this or I'd heard this, originally the hearts weren't there, and the, the, maybe the, the players felt a bit sort of lost, lost. or unguided, and so put things in, they put them in there to give them an area to focus on. But yeah. But it's such a definitive focus that it actually takes away from all of the areas around it. Um, and I, I don't know, the hearts seem to do as much, be as problematic as they are a good thing. I guess it, the thing it, that it's I, a very difficult balance to find. It's, it's well, really that's the thing, and, and, and we're probably not the norm, right? Like everyone watching this show and us sitting here, like we're not the norm. Like we might be able to deal with no hearts and just get through with that, but it's like I'm sure they looked at data at some point. I mean, does anybody have any more information about them not having hearts at some point? Is that true in beta? I don't know if they've, uh, it's not in beta, but I, I've, I've heard that at some point there was either no hearts or no scouts and that some of the initial feedback was players would get into the world, like Scott said, and they just not lost. know what to do. They just lost. They, 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 they needed something to kind of push them into the world. And, and, and that's where the idea, I think scout, scouts and possibly hearts came in. So wonder what, 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 what wonder if they, as you leveled up, as you gained higher in level, they slowly started disappearing and became less and less prominent. So you, they do. Oh, they do. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. As you level up, well, I noticed. Uh, I noticed. Uh, I'm like, uh, I forget what level I am. I'm getting close to thirty, I think. But I noticed that they start pointing out. Scouts start pointing out less and less areas and things. I noticed that, yeah. like, they used to. You know, when I started out, they'd point out like five or six hearts, and now they're pointing out like one. So I noticed that and definitely is changing. That changes, and then by the time you get to or, there are no hearts. So it, it is something that they've kind of built in that like, hey, when you're just getting used to the game, here's stuff to kind of show you around. Now you're a big kid, like you're in your 60s and 70s, like you can probably go out and handle it okay without us holding your hand throughout the map. It's okay, cool. then maybe that's the answer. Maybe we're just kind of like hoping mm -hmm. for it a little bit too early. Uh, how about this? Anybody, I don't know if anybody got rolled a ranger, but ranger pets will now be, uh, will now more responsibly use their special attacks when commanded to. Um, Yay. who's playing a ranger? How do the pets, how do the pets feel? Um, they feel better than they had in the betas. Um, pets have been something of a harping point for me throughout the betas. Um, so they're responding a lot better and every update is good. Um, I, I, good. I love the, I love the change that they made to reviving pets. You can't hit F to revive pets anymore, which is just great because not only for the ranger feeling like they had to constantly stop in combat and, and get their pet up instead of, you know, just switching them out and to have it done automatically. Um, 
but also every you know if you have rangers around you it's so annoying every time you're trying to like revive somebody else you wind up resing you know, a, a pet, pet. pet you're like oh, oh stupid armadillo mm-hmm. get out of the way <laughs> gosh darn those pets in big battles it was so annoying and now it's gone and that's a good thing i want to loot and i'll revive you bloody <laughs> snow links or whatever, the, whatever <laughs> like i don't care about this leopard i just don't or as, or as my dad put it, you friggin' emus. <laughs> I'm like, dad, those are moas. <laughs> you friggin' emus. He's from Jersey. You friggin' emus. All right, uh, Max Glory uh, Max Glory per PvP match is uh, set to 350. So this, this is actually going to help stop uh, an exploit. Uh, letting players farm. They were farming tons of glory by trading wins. Elizabeth, why would you do this, really? Why? Why would, why would I'm you? sorry. It was Ed Parks and I. We just thought it was a good idea, like find our own little quiet server and just trade off. And I'm, I'm sorry, I got caught. <laughs> no, seriously, she did not do this. <laughs> I did not do that at all. <laughs> I, have to, I have to follow up with that because there'll be so many fans it's going. Like, I can't right believe Elizabeth, you're my hero. I can't believe you just shattered my my view of you. I just thought you were so different. <laughs> Ed tries to go on. on Ed. Ed tries to go on build build cast build after cast this. He's like, like, oh my god, I got banned. Uh, Rita had also implemented an achievement for players who reached the cap, which brings to my question: Did somebody tell me what the point of achievements in Guild Wars Two are? I anyway. think in. In, in this case, I think it's to let people... Because, I mean, if you didn't know that there was that cap and suddenly you're not getting more glory, you'd be like, why? What, where my glory go? Like, what, why? I killed him. Why not get more glory? So, like, I hope that in this case it's just to be like, hey, you hit your cap. Congratulations. Go you. Don't expect more from this match. Is it really um, just that, that people just like numbers? Like, am I missing something? I mean, I, I guess I expected a little bit more of a connection like to, like, titles, pets, things like that, you know, through achievements. Uh, there are I want titles. to know what the points are for. Like yeah. every time you get an achievement, you get, and I have like seven hundred points, and I don't know what they're the, for. The points Maybe are for nothing. Points. The I points mean, are for fun. I mean, the points are for points. Have- when 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 Warcraft came out and introduced their achievement system, right? That was the big talk. It was like, what are? Why do I have points? You know, and like, what can I spend these points on? And and you and in Warcraft, you can. It's just a, a number of how many. You know, just a arbitrary number that just shows how much you've accomplished in the game you know in, in arena net uh their system uh, you know they haven't announced that the points are for anything but the achievements themselves there are you know many of them that you can unlock titles for yeah titles so, so that's pretty cool uh i would like there to see more of that i'd like there to be pets and different things that else so you can you know, incentivize you to actually do these things and i also like to see more achievements that just had you do silly random stuff rather than just like kill Danced for two hours. Danced for two hours, exactly. I mean, they make me feel really good about myself when they pop up, and it's like, you got an achievement, and here's a treasure chest, and you click it, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm now such a good player. Yes. Seriously. It those, little, those little treasure chests on the side of the screen, man, that's genius. Those are the most fun things to click on ever. I swear, the arena must have went to Vegas and hired like the best like psychologist from Vegas. They're just like, you design slot machines. MMO players, they want like, you know, 2,000 slot machines crammed into one. We just need to like flashing lights and blinking things and bells and whistles going off and just lots of stimuli and boy, they're hooked. Wait. Forget it. Or <laughs> when you discover a new rep- recipe in crafting. That, that, like, oh my God. It's, it's like I ran a triathlon. I'm like, oh my God, I won. <laughs> Holy so cool. It totally feels that good. Yeah, they're big on the positive reinforcement. It's kind of yeah. fun. Except when it comes to trailers. All right. Um, Don't, can we talk about the game? You, you brought us down again, man. Sorry, man. Crafters are uh, about to craft items using materials from their bank. And I say, yes, keep going. Yes, that's the dance I wanted to do, but she started doing it before <laughs> me. It's in already. It's awesome. Ah, oh, yes. Great. Thank God. So great. great, 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 great uh, addition or change, uh, which makes the it makes the whole system so much better. Um, yeah. So one thing that you still can't uh, you still can't you, uh, discover recipes using materials yeah. from your bank, uh, but ArenaNet said they are working on it, so I'm sure that's coming as well. Um, yeah. That's I mean, crafting storage was probably the biggest issue. I mean, after this though, I. It's 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 set. Yep. It's a great system. Once once that last piece is in place. Awesome. 
Are you guys all swimming in butter like I am? So much butter. Yeah. Oh, so much butter. butter. Sticks of butter. So oh. many. I need to when start patch, the green. When that patch went live, I was, of course, awake because sleep is something for other people. And um, I, I hopped on. I was recording a video. And within five minutes, I had like four or five sticks of butter within five minutes. <laughs> Like of the patch, I was like, oh, "What's happened here?" And then I checked. Well, we've got butter everywhere. I can't. I can't believe it's not more butter. And, um, oh, you went there, it, it huh? You in, went there. You... Sorry, I'm sorry. Good, good job. I want hey, to you... know why the centaurs carry butter around with them <laughs> everywhere they go. They like don't leave home everybody. without seven sticks of butter. Are the, are the centaurs? Are they, but are the centaurs like British? Do they like leave the butter out on the counter? Do you leave the cutter? Do you leave the butter out on the counter? No. No, no, no. Brit then it would be more oh, British people. No, British. Isn't that, isn't that what you guys do? You leave the butter out. You leave the butter out, yeah. right, Scott? I didn't. I'm not no. making that up, man. You are making that up. I'm not <laughs> making saying, that up. It's like it's like I'm we drink warm making... beer. No, we don't. Yeah, you, you do. You drink crap beer. We don't. We drink chilled beer. It's crap. And you leave the butter <laughs> on the counter. An American talking to me about beer. Americans have no space to say that. I have to say, no, no, I, li no, no, no. I like, I like how he's trying to convince you, Scott, that you do leave the butter out. You do. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I know you do. You may not know what you got. Do you want me to go get it out of the fridge? No, if you, if you don't, it's because your wife. It's because your condensation on the side of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because your wife transformed you. British people leave butter out. It's a fact. <laughs> well, we'd all be just, we'd, you'd just have a, a, like a liquid mess on a table. What? It makes no sense, man. It's a fact. It's fact. <laughs> Speaking of facts, uh, your guardians uh, saw some significant changes, huh? Shh. Huh? 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 You don't want to talk about those either. You're going to make something else up that you don't leave the butter out. Guardians didn't get changes. You live in this bubble, huh? Yes, they did. The change did. <laughs> You can't you can't own no, you can't own nodes now like they're yours. Uh, <laughs> mine. What do they do? Um, tell me. Tell yeah. me what's going on. Well, the elite skills are changed. The, the main ones is the the, uh, the tomes are changed, so you don't get stability now. You get retaliation and you get um, what's the other one? Uh, protection. Like you either get damage reduction or retaliation to uh, send damage back to whoever's attacking you. Before you got stability, which you know. Kept you up and and meant that when you were standing on a node, people couldn't knock you off it, and it was really fun. It was so we fun. Not anymore. No. Now we've just got to like you know try and fight like everybody else does. We're down here with the rest of you. Blah 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 blah. blah. At least I know where to put the butter. <laughs> what the what? <laughs> I can tell you where to put the butter, sir. I assume we're saying in the fridge. Oh, Not what I God. was thinking. In, in because you fridge. don't know where to put the butter. That's why I do. The answer is in the fridge. <laughs> I'm not there mature are enough. no other acceptable answers. It's in the centaur, apparently. <laughs> I'm not mature enough for this conversation. Scott, we just need to do a comedy show. Just like in you and me, just back and forth. I don't even know. Put the butter in the centaur. <laughs> put, put the butter Girl, in the centaur. There's a song there. Right? I feel like there's a song there. I don't, care about your, I don't care about your guardians. Um, Richie, Liz, I don't know any class changes. You guys see any class changes? Anything no, stand left, out big? No. They left warriors alone. Scott, go, get, go, go put your butter on the counter like a true Brit. Go on. Can, can we stop telling people? I will if I could get out of the fridge first. I just believe that everyone should be able to put their butter wherever they like. And... <laughs> <laughs> Freeze butter! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna move on uh, uh, really I quick. I in a world where butter goes wherever it wants to. Really wherever does. it pleases. Nobody tells um, that butter. I'm not moving on. Moving on from this ridiculous conversation. Uh, this week, it looks like uh, Guild Wars 2 has dethroned the League of Legends on the old Raptors. You guys see this? Uh, we posted this up today. Uh, for this week, it looks like uh, Raptors top uh, games being played for the week. Guild Wars 2 hit 256,623 hours. 
That's a lot of hours. Uh, followed by number two, which is League of Legends at 245,000 uh, hours. Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Elder Scrolls following. Close behind. So I thought this was kind of interesting. Just want to point it out. Uh, it's a bit popular. It's a bit, it's a bit popular. Number one game in the world. Number one game in the world. And we're the Fact. number one show about it. Look at you're getting good at this. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all I'm gonna say. Anything about marketing? No, no, no. That's what. Shut up. I was, that's why I was dialing it back. I was like, you know, okay. by this point, ArenaNet has forgotten about that first story that we talked about, and now I'm just like praising it. Number one game. Woo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Raptor, Raptor, Raptor! Put out a press release. We're the number one game. We beat League of Legends. I would. All right. <laughs> this next segment is brought to you by Guildhead. Go over to Guildhead.com for all your Guild Wars 2 database needs. And look up Scott's Butter. And all right, first look up, up the sweepstakes. Oh. What, what? You got a sweepstakes going on? Oh, what are you guys doing? Steel series, gear, and gems, and all sorts of stuff. Oh, here. look at this. Enter now. I didn't even see this. What are you guys giving away? Let's see. Oh, uh, oh, tons of crap. You got a uh, yeah, nice. Oh, you got Steel Series headsets. You got some gaming mouse, mouse pads, a monitor. Oh, a BenQ monitor. Nice. That's for the grand prize. Oh, grand prize gets all of that, huh? Nice little. Mm -hmm. All right. So first prize gets a gaming headset, a mouse, and a mouse pad, and then daily prizes are uh, in-game keys for something rather. Don't know what that is, but I want it. All right. So go over to Guilted and uh, <laughs> get in on that sweepstakes. All right. Pay the bills for the week. All right, Scott. There was your check. Thank you. All right, next up, the forums are up and running. Uh, the official forums on the Guild Wars 2 official forums are finally up and running. Uh, with pretty much all of the for sub forums that I think we expected. Uh, you guys happy overall uh, with, the, with the forums? The one thing that I did notice uh, that I was a little bit surprised of is the lack of uh, server forms, though. We'll point that out. There's no server forms, which... I don't know. Kind of doesn't make really sense to me. I feel like we do need those because of the dub v dub. Don't why you know? Don't don't we really need mm -hmm. to kind of coordinate with the rest of the people on our server to make sure that uh, we are stomping Jesse and, Cox's face into the ground? Well, do we really need to coordinate to do that? No, we don't. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Really? You know what I mean. No, it, and more importantly, to coordinate with the other server that Scare needs uh, backside handed to it by the really strong one of the three. So you can say, hey, guys, we're from the other server. Do you want to meet up at this time and attack those instead of each other? Which seems to be going on a lot. Um, That's true, because I guess, 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 guess trying to coordinate on open servers would kind of be stupid. Somebody pointed that out in chat room because you'd just be, like, showing your hand at that point. So that's kind of dumb. All right, so scratch right. that. I'm an idiot. Um, but I was a little surprised. I mean, besides that, I think the forms look great. That was the only thing that I thought was, like, you know, hmm, surprise there's no server forms. Maybe we don't need them. Yeah, Maybe a lot black of the Go ahead. I would say a lot of the servers have already developed their own kind of like server community forums or, or world versus world community forums off site somewhere. So, yeah, I agree. Other, you know, you, you show your hand <laughs> immediately posting that. I also think that, you know, Scott was going from the perspective of, you know, servers cooperating to take out the, the, the winning one, but there would probably be a lot of flaming too. They would be like, oh, you know, you guys suck or, you know. I, I feel know. like if they did have server forums, you they would make it so you could only see the form for your server. That would so be awesome. Would, so it wouldn't really help for coordinating cross server, but it would be really great for within your own server. And that would help give kind of a sense of community. Look at you. And then you could hire spies. You could hire, you could hire you could have espionage uh, going accounts. on and have spy accounts of people that be, to become EVE online. They've um, got a trebuchet. They've got a trebuchet. <laughs> What do you guys think overall, though? Are you guys happy with the, the the way that they're doing the uh, the forms and the layout and everything? Pretty good. Yeah. Dev tracker might need need a bit of work, but other than that, yeah, I it's agree a bit active. Dev tracker. I'd say I'd say to say it's active is a bit of an understatement, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need to split it. They need to <laughs> they need to get the uh, like the support devs to not count in the dev tracker or some other way to split it so that there's a dev tracker for the support issues and a dev tracker for everything else but yeah, other the, than that we need stuff to talk great. about so they need to point out the super interesting super interesting dev posts and not all the stuff that we need to sift through so all right see some viewer questions first up this week uh from ian carthy uh ian uh, says is the mystic forge is something a lot of players are experimenting with at the moment uh, should ArenaNet have a tutorial 
explaining it to new players who don't understand it, and a more advanced guide for more experienced players. I'll answer for everybody. No, no, no. Go ahead, Scott. Um, no. Uh, it's, it's, yep. no. That, yep. 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 Does anybody say yes? Seriously, does anybody say no. yes to this? I don't think so. So you guys like the like the, like the mystery? I think they I, I think they have to leave that. Yeah. It's about it's about it's a game that's about exploration, and you want to take the exploration out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of places you can go and get that girl's head and find uh, girl's head, uh, you know, recipes and all sorts of stuff. But if if I don't want to be shown everything, unless I want to go and find it myself, don't throw it at me. Let me go find it. Again, I think I think it's 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 funny because I think this is like one of those things, and there's the, even like with the discovery with crafting, right? I've got some friends who jumped into it and they just started crafting. They've been playing for a few levels and they jumped in and they were like, "What's this discovery thing?" And they're like, "How do I make stuff?" And I'm like, uh, "You have to discover stuff." And they're like, "Huh?" And I'm like, "Yeah, like they don't tell you how to make stuff. You've got to figure it out, and you're gonna feel really good when you're done because you'll be like, "Yay, I win!" Okay, and then they do it. And they're, they do, and then when this, they do it, they're like, "Oh, that's really cool!" And they, and everybody that's done it has been like, "Oh, wow, I kind of really like this crafting system. Like, it's not just like put ten of these in and click craft all, and you know, sit here for ten minutes and wait for my items to just populate my account." And and this, like, I was, we, we were listening to a podcast today, and my wife says to me, "Oh, in she, she's a she's a WoW player. She wants to get to, she's going to come into Guild Wars too soon." But she says, "Oh, so you you don't have to spend like ages killing mobs for for a pattern to drop." You just discover it yourself. That's really cool. And it's true, because the alternative is either it's all there already, and you just get it when you skill up, and it's like, eh, it's a bit boring. Or it's a random drop off a mob, and you go to a certain area where you know it drops off those mobs, and you slaughter hundreds of them until it drops. And that's usually, in MMOs, the way it goes with this. You just discover it yourself. And, I think and the good thing is, with the other stuff, it is pretty straightforward. It tells you how to craft stuff. Like it has mm -hmm. both, right? It has the yeah. traditional, like, hey, you need this, this, and this to make this, and then it has this other element that you can delve into and and go a little bit deeper. So, I feel like I, the Mystic I, Forge is something that they they hope that you really start utilizing way more later in game. Like you shouldn't be like you know level ten messing around with that. And you'll learn, and hopefully you're with a guild and people know about it, and you'll ask questions and actually be social. Unlike you know Richie who plays by himself all the time, doesn't answer any of my tells in game. Richie. <laughs> You don't. You don't know my account name. I was gonna say you're sending other people tells. I'm you haven't sent me a tell. <laughs> <laughs> I had to change accounts. Suddenly drama. Drama. Oh no! Yeah, I was gonna pester him now. Nice. <laughs> no. no. But the thing is, is also the way that you discover them has a sense to it. So once you know how to discover some of them, it's got a nice learning curve. To okay, if I try this type with this type and this type, I'll find something. And so it's, you know, it, it's, it's straightforward, but it's not so difficult to, that it's coming out of left field. I think it's really well balanced. The one thing that Discovery does for me, though, it makes me such a hoarder because I don't know what I'm going to need for anything. And I'm like, wow, this looks really insignificant and this looks like crap that I should just sell. But I'm probably going to need it at some point for something I don't even know exists. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, this one in from Richie Khan. Richie uh, says, uh, how is it going to be possible to do events when everyone else levels up and moves on to newer zones and you're stuck with very few people in lower end zones? I already ran into this problem the other day and it took me uh, about 15 minutes to kill one elite by kiting around because I was the only one participating in the event. Um, um, and that's a bad thing you could you spend 15 minutes instead of 12 i mean do you want to kill every dynamic event in under three is there some sort of goal here that i don't know well, about i think he's talking about the the sort of like veteran or champion bosses that you yeah. get in some of those events where it'll be the one that are labeled tough group, group event group. yeah um so feeling that you should be able to tackle group events on your own um they're called group events. You know what? I'm trying to They're called nice group down. events. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, def I'm gonna defend the question a little bit. I've actually had a friend who the entire beta has been talking to me about these exact issues. Like, isn't this gonna be an issue when people are all like max level and these these zones really clear out? And you know what? I I, I could see on the one hand, you, you know, 
you're not supposed to do those type of events, so you can avoid those or whatever. But even just playing by yourself, if you're the only one in a zone, I was streaming the other day and I was in a place all, and I was streaming like in the, in the AM and there wasn't anybody around me. And it's not only is it harder, but it's less fun. It's definitely less fun with that. No. So uh, I, I think, I think that long term, you know, there might need to be some sort of incentive or, or some, I don't know. It's going. It might be an issue. It's too too hard to say right now because there's still a lot of people out there. But it's, it is a little interesting. I know that that Wow it has the you know coming in the midst of Pandaria, they're having those cross server zones to get a large influx of people, and that that looks like a solution that would actually be really kind of cool to have. But what, what I would say is is that I can't think of any of them where it's you have to beat it to get something vital. Like it's not like a. I, I don't think any of them are. Like you, I think most of skill challenges that you can solo them. Anything I've come across, you can solo. So it's these are dynamic event related. So if it's a dynamic event that you can't do on your you can't do on your own that you need a group for. Content that that needs a group, I don't think that's a bit of a problem. I I'm okay with stuff that I can't tackle on my own in a game. I, in fact, I kind of like I guess that. there's, but there is a flip. I mean, there's two sides to it, right? Like, I, I, I can yeah, see what you're really. saying. I mean, because I'm kind of of the mindset of like, hey, if I come to a dynamic event and it's a group dynamic event and I'm playing solo right now and I can't finish it, I'll go do something else. And I'm like totally okay with that. And if I really want to experience all those events, I'll come back to them later and maybe have like more people or be higher level, something like that. And I'm okay with that. But I mean, I don't know. A couple months down the road, is it, are some of these lower levels going to be more like ghost towns? And then it's going to be like you have to literally put groups of people together to say, hey, can you help me out? I want to go do this event and experience it, but I need some help. And maybe that's there okay. Couple, I don't know. Yeah, there are a couple things about that. First of all, most events can be completed without a group. Second of all, there are always going to be nut jobs like me who are running around and like, no, I have 28 alts and I really want to run through all of them. And they're all going to explore every single zone. So there are there will be people around, and also with the way that they're intending to patch in new dynamic events over time and phase them out, phase them in, hopefully that will be incentive for people to go back through and try old content that has been made new by patches. So that was that was my next thing I was going to say. What would be great is if they start adding other dynamic events in some of these areas to bring players back into those areas to keep them kind of like populated. I mean, I can't imagine logistically what that must be like to try and keep the world's constantly moving like that. But at the same time, that would be cool. And the areas always feel like they're, uh, they're kind of, you know, populated. Um, and that's been hinted at by, that's been what? That's been hinted at by them talking about what's going to be going on with the live stream sure. and so on. Yes. Fresh Are all of you guys, are all of you guys still being 100% completionist? Because I've, I've thrown that out the window at this point. I'm not finishing zones. Are the three of you still doing it? I do 100% on every zone I touch before I can yeah. move on. It's a, it's a sickness. I don't... <laughs> I found between some of them, but I'm definitely... I have eight or nine maps excluding cities that are 100%, and it's cool. You know what's a little crazy along that vein is... You know, and we we've known this, but it's it's starting to become a reality to me. There there are zones that I've done a hundred percent, and I still find things like jumping puzzles and caves and different things that aren't included in the hundred percent. That are it's like, oh no, I have to go back with a fine tooth code every single zone so I can make yeah, sure. Um, in the Harathi hinterlands, I got a hundred percent completion, and then there was a group event that was marked from way across the map in an area I hadn't been to in a hidden area that no point of interest, no anything, so there's no reason completionist-wise to go there. But it was really cool because it was all underground and it was hidden and you go there and there's cool stuff going on and it was super neat. So that's kind of exciting. I found this something similar is. last night. I think I was swimming. I, I was just randomly swimming for some reason and found some underwater cave that was crazy twisting and turning and all of a sudden I, I i ended up in like some some weird area with some i don't even know that they, they weren't like toad looking people i forget i don't but there was nothing else there like there wasn't even there wasn't a, there weren't any quests or anything to do there they were just there but i was like oh that was kind of neat like i just found this mm -hmm. little place yep it's cool there was there's the, the very first farm in queensdale that everybody knows you know what you know save the hay feed the mm -hmm. cow kill the bandits there's a dynamic event there I had never seen before in any BWE or anything before. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing that's crazy, is that I was still finding new stuff, having completed it on my Guardian, and then going through again on the Engineer, and still finding more stuff after having played it as much as I had, that particular bit of acreage. 
was stunning. Uh, so even if you get 100% in the zone, guarantee the stuff you haven't seen. Yeah. All right, last up this week. This one in from Jan Stroop. Jan says, uh, they said the home instance will play a major role in the game, uh, reflecting the character's growth. Do you have any ambition to go there beside your story missions? Do you think it lived up to the expectations? Richie, I'll start with you. Well, I haven't actually progressed my story so far. I mean, I've unlocked the my home instance, and I can see, you know, kind of where they're going with it. I guess it depends on what your expectations are. If you're expecting it to be kind of like player housing, where you're going to want to invite people in and customize things and all that kind of, it's probably not going to live up to your expectations. But if you want a place to go that kind of makes the game feel like that there's a story that involves your character specifically and you can actually your choices actually make a difference in this this section of the world then i think it will live up to expectations but like i said I've, I've experienced a very small part of it so i can't really speak from experience liz what do you think um so the human story kind of deals a lot with your home instance right at the very beginning and then you are going farther afield and so i hadn't been brought by my story back to it and i kind of wanted to take a good chunk of a couple dozen levels or whatever to um, kind of be away from it to see if it would change over my story and I really today meant to get back into that so I could check and report on it for the, this and and then like there was crafting and 18 billion things that I had to do once I got in game so I, I didn't actually <laughs> look but um, so my character is 56 and uh, hasn't been to her home instance since she was in the high teens so I'm hoping when I go back there will be some sort of substantial change like there are a few key events that have happened that I would really like to see reflected in some way and might be very sad if they aren't. Scott? Well, I grew up in a dump and now I'm hanging out at the vigil. So, like, why would I go back there? <laughs> I got a better place no. to live. Yeah, I'm better now. Dude, I'm actually put the butter in the refrigerator up. here. Everybody does. Every, no one says potato either. And beer. that's our closing. <laughs> Scott Ox, follow him on the Twitter at Jeremore. And of course, go to Zam.com, Guildhead, Wow, and all that good stuff. J A R I M O R on the Twitter. Uh, Elizabeth Claire, follow her on the Twitter at Elizabeth Claire. It's with an X. XX Elizabeth Claire, and of course, go to massively.com and read all her great stuff. Yes. I didn't mean that. Yeah, you gave me a weird look there, but I was just trying to point out that your name is an X. Uh, yes. Rich Procopio, follow him on the Twitter at Rich Procopio, and of course, go over his YouTube channel, Bog Otter, for all his Guild Wars 2 videos that are going on over there. And you can follow me on the Twitter at Gary Gannon. Uh, you can also follow Game Breaker at Game Breaker TV, and of course, we do the show live every single Wednesday at 6, live, followed by BuildCast uh, at 8, except this week, it is supposed to be until Friday, so we are doing BuildCast this Friday at 8 PDT, so make sure to come on over for that show as well with Ed Park, Matt Sorg, and Math, Math, Math. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Happy birthday, Richie. Oh! Happy birthday, Richie. Crap. No, I'm not going to end the show. Hang on. I'm not going to end the show. Hang on. Bring it oh, back. No. Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Q. What can I find? Hmm, I don't know. Wait. Well, wait. Hmm. Yeah, everybody just hang out. It's cool. It's cool. We'll just hang out. Hmm. Got a singing right. to you, Richie. Thank you. Thanks, chat room. I am an old man. This was for you. You're 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 nearly as old as me now. Happy birthday to you. Great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Is that Shafnit? <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Hat off to Richie. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. Thanks, everybody in chat. Thank you. That's adorable.